well, my name is Cesar Lopez. I'm from Brazil, and my the object of my research was uh, trying to develop a framework for thinking about a curriculum for formal education in the Latin American context in general and in the Brazilian context more specifically. So I, I looked to investigate how a holistic perspective on Latin American theology, which is uh, a very contextual perspective for us in Latin America, this holistic or integral theology. So I tried to find how this integral perspective would find a common ground with curriculum theories. And here I'm speaking about educational theory in general, not just Christian education, but how Latin American theology, curriculum theories, and, and some sort of philosophical approaches would fit together to hold this curriculum approach uh, for theological education in Latin America a little bit firmer together. And, and again, my, my original concern was with formal education, with the kind of formation offered in a seminary setting. So that's, that's a, a, a sum or maybe a summary uh, of my research. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the question of what motivated me is a good question because uh, I actually had some experience in teaching in a seminary setting before going into the PhD. And as, as many people who are from majority world context who may be watching this video know, uh, the, the seminary setting, the theological education context in the majority world uh, setting is heavily influenced by how the North Atlantic world does theological education. It's a very common, it, it is a very common experience for us in, in majority world seminaries to have a sort of a curriculum translated from English most most typically into our regional languages. And, and, and we know that it just does not make sense. It's not just about translating classes, translating subjects, and using a translated bibliography. Uh, it's not enough to do contextual theology. So uh, a challenge that we have more most commonly in our contexts is try to think more broadly not just about what kind of local bibliography we can use, but how can we arrange together the different subjects that, that present a real challenge for us? How can we, can we start from the local questions and then rearrange the educational experience in order to make a fuller sense for people that are being formed in our organizations? Uh, so th this is a question about curriculum. Uh, and, and in the local seminary that I was used to work with, it is the South American Theological Seminary that, that I, I don't know, other, other teachers, other colleagues have gone through scholar leaders also. Uh, and we asked ourselves this question and we, and we went through a major uh, curriculum review process in the years before my PhD. And I learned a lot from that process. But what I learned the most was the amount of gaps that I had in terms of educational theory. Uh, I, I was able to somehow, somehow navigate the, the theological context, uh, theological content uh, from a Latin American perspective, but, but I felt the gaps in terms of educational theory. So that's that what motivated me uh, to go into my PhD looking to somehow fill those gaps. Yeah. Uh, the, the question about how do I bring together my research and the church context, uh, this is where maybe my, my PhD syndrome kicks in. Uh, you know, after we spend many years researching a subject and we are passionate about this subject, we may convince ourselves that the solution to all the problems is within my field of studies. If everybody could see what I see in my field of studies, all the problems of the church would disappear. And, and we know it's not true. But again, this is this is the element of the PhD syndrome that, that I just can't get rid of. 
I do think that most, not most, but but a lot of the problems that we see in the church context are also related with, with a, a matter of curriculum perspectives. And I don't think about curriculum as, as, as a theory that, that you put into a book or, or, I don't know, something that you organize a, a school experience with. I think about curriculum as a relationship with, of mm -hmm. not just as, as something that you organize school experiences with, but as a way of connecting knowledges, practices, and effects into your, your everyday life. Uh, knowledges is somehow obvious. Uh, uh, I don't know what you know about verses of biblical truth, of, of ideas, of theologies. Practices. Uh, it's about how you how you move into the things you do, how you how you apply, how you pray, how you teach, how you how you sing together, how you worship together as as a as a congregation, but also affects. And I mean that in the affective level. What do you value? What are you passionate about? What uh, what do you put your emotions with? And and in the Latin American context. Uh, putting your emotions into stuff is, is a very important level of of of, of commitment with church and, and and with your testimony. Uh, so I, when I think the, about curriculum, I think about how do we integrate these these, these things together. Uh, and and my evaluation that we we have not been doing it very well in the Brazilian context specifically and in, in the Latin American context more generally. Our spiritual formation uh, has not been leading people into integrating that in their Christian testimony. We have not been, been forming people to look for the kingdom of God and it's just this first we have been forming people to look for the other things that will be added to them if we look for the kingdom and, and its justice first. Uh, so the, this is a, this is how I justify myself in that PhD syndrome, but it's also a, a real concern, uh, something that 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 worries me a lot. Uh, and, and how do I engage with that? I, I see mostly two areas. I have been mentioning the Brazilian context and Latin American context, both of them, because right now I find myself serving in, in an organization called SETI, which is the Spanish acronym for Community of Interdisciplinary Theological Studies. We offer a formal master's degree program in transformational leadership, uh, but our strongest program is a non-formal program being offered to, to hundreds of students in a dozen different countries in our continent. Uh, so this is one way in which my research has been useful for me, both in helping uh, to forward SETI's efforts in the formal arm, but also utilizing this curricular, curricular contextual framework to have a direct incidence in, in local churches that we partner with. Uh, I, I, I do have to mention that SETI's framework was super well developed even before I joined the team, but, and I cannot take credit for that. Uh, but one thing that we learn in curriculum theory, especially under a Latin American theological framework, is that we have to always keep updating, always keep renovating, always make sure that the approach and the substance is still relevant. So this is a question that we, we, we ask ourselves permanently with this, this program of forming, spiritually forming local leaders in local churches in a dozen different countries in our in our continent but i also i also see my research and this curricular framework uh, valid when when i am acting in the local church context i have to confess that most of the time this is a sort this is sort of a burden for me because uh, since i don't know putting the idea of a curriculum integration uh, uh, for the church 
in in a preeminent place. I, I just cannot see myself visiting a church and parachuting and preaching and teaching and getting out of that of there. Uh, I I always have to ask to the local leadership, what have you been studying? What are some of your more common problems? What, Where do you see your congregation moving toward in the next couple of years? So I try to, to, to somehow serve this congregation, offering this kind of, of knowledges and practice and effective content uh, to to be of service of them in their context to help them integrate this sort of stuff. So th these are maybe the major two two areas in which I see my research contributing somehow to the local churches in my context. Okay. Um, so um, I can I can think of a couple examples of situations in which uh, I I could actually see uh, the things that I value in curriculum theory and curriculum research being being caught by people in the in the ground. Let's say it. Uh, the first is is I don't know in 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 local environments that we have been in Colombia recently, in El Salvador, in Guatemala, uh, sometimes we are we are talking with people about their challenges, about the way that they see theology, they see Christian life, and they see Christian testimony. And again, I mentioned how I see curriculum bringing together an array of, of, of areas of, of our life, uh, knowledges and practices and affects, and and it's always beautiful to see the looking people's face when they are able to click together those things and when they they say wow i have never felt this way about i don't know the idea of looking for the kingdom first and it's justice uh it's it always felt uh i don't know an abstract idea but when i when i see that looking for the kingdom in my neighborhood and to live justly and to, to be able to advocate for people to be treated justly, this is Christian testimony. Uh, uh, so the, to be able to, to listen to that and to hear people say, speaking about that, it, it's just a blessing in the way that you, you can actually see the the I don't know the 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 pieces feeding together. Uh, this this is something that heavily motivates us in in North America in general in in SETI specifically. We want to form people in a way that they can look uh, for, for for that look for living integrally and not just you know a fragmented Christian life. So whenever whenever we can see this, it, it is really a blessing, and it's always it's always a challenge also to maybe starting again. It's also a challenge to see to work with pastors and sometimes with teachers, people that work in theological education for for many many years, people that are very very deep into their own areas and sometimes they see themselves in their in those silos and and i i actually worked for for many years for i don't know six or seven years with a theological seminary from a presbyterian independent church here in brazil uh that has a very well respected program uh, very good teachers very good professors and, and somehow they saw themselves into their own silos doing their own thing. And when we when we coordinated uh, a program with them uh, and we put them together to speak about their subjects and to look for points of contact instead of looking for how their own discipline was more important than the others. And, and and being able to see those teachers working together and understanding that their 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 class their subject is not the goal, but it's a means 
towards the spiritual formation of the students. Uh, I have to say this is one of the most rewarding things that you that you can see as a curriculum worker uh, to overcome or to help people work with people in order to overcome the siloing of theological education that I personally see as one of the, the worst diseases in theological education worldwide. So, so again, uh, it's not an easy thing to, to do. It, it takes years to, to help people move away from this siloing perspective. Uh, but it's beautiful to see people working together and finding common ground and, and, and pushing together towards a more holistic uh, spiritual formation for the people in seminaries. Okay. Um, well, um maybe maybe just just let my colleagues know that there is life after the the phd uh when you are i don't know many many hours in a library in your office working and thinking and trying to connect stuff and revising your text for the i don't know 10th, 11th time and, and making all the quotes and, and working in other things. And there, there's, there is life after that. I, uh, uh, I understand that this, this may be a very heavy time. Uh, there are highs and lows. There's, there are moments of classes and of finding stuff that are very funny or very, very, very great moments. And there are those lonely times in a library that you you feel, oh man, what am I what am I doing <laughs> in this in this context? But but you know, it's it, it is a blessing to 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 find your specific contribution and then to generalize it to make this contribution be of service for the church, for your context, for your seminary, for your people, for your city. Uh, for your society, so so there is there is life after after the PhD program you are in, and and you know I hope you 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 may finish well your your research and and continue to serve the church in your own context as well as you have been doing before, but or better than you have been doing before. Yeah.